How to create an iOS styled Cupertino button in Flutter. We will create buttons which include a title and image icon and we will also customize the background and foreground color and the button size. If you are new here, subscribe to my channel and make sure to watch this video till the end. The Cupertino button should be used for iOS platforms while we also have the material button which is used for Android platforms. Let's start with the build method and here we want to create a Cupertino button with a text. And lastly you need to add mandatory here this on press handler. And with this we have here the simple text button and let's also increment here the text style. So I put it here to a bigger font size and now if I click on it then you see it more clearly. Next we want to give our button a background and therefore you go here to this Cupertino button and add this filled constructor. And with this our button is filled with the primary color that we have here supplied inside of our theme. However, what you also can do is you can simply remove here this filled and then you can supply here your custom background color, so in this case blue. You also can make your button more rounded by supplying the border radius and I set it here to 24 and with this our button is here more rounded and in case you put here a higher value inside then our button is even more rounded. And in case you put here zero inside then we have here this rectangular button. Next we want to change the size of our button, the width and also the height and therefore you have here within your Cupertino button the min size and this is basically changing then the height of our button. So if I put here another value inside then you should see that it is only changing the height. Let's simply remove this again. And the next variant is to simply use here a padding and then you set here for example the horizontal padding which is then here the spacing on the left and right side and the vertical spacing which is then here the spacing on the top and bottom and you can basically change it here then to make your button bigger on the horizontal axis or even here on the vertical axis you can also change then the size. Next to the min size and padding you also have a third option Therefore you simply go to your Cupertino button and you simply wrap it inside of a size box and then you can set here manually the width and height of your button. And now after a hot reload this button has here a width of 260 and also height of 60 and you can basically change it here if you like. Only be aware if you put here a really small size inside then the text might be clipped away. Therefore you always need to be here really careful that you put here the right size inside so that also your label is fitting inside. And in case you put here a smaller size inside then always make also sure that you put here this padding to zero because by default it is set to 16 pixels and with this you see that our button is even fixed. However still if you put it here to a really small size then our button will not be displayed correctly. Let's also look at the most important part of a button, the unpressed handler and this is always called if you click then on this button. So now by default if you touch on this button you see that we have here this fading opacity and if I click on it then we see that this is executed what we have put here inside. And if you like you can also change here this opacity to your own opacity and therefore you have here this property pressed opacity. And with this we have here less opacity for our button and the default value is 0.5 which is 40% and with this you see we have here more opacity. If you want to disable your button you simply need to pass here then a null value inside of this on press handler and with this our button is here disabled. And you can also use the disabled color property to change the color of your button inside of the disabled state. And if you want to change it here dynamically between a disabled and enabled button therefore you can simply add here this is disabled flag and in case our button is disabled then we return here null and otherwise we simply put here our handler inside. And therefore I also have created here in our state this is disabled boolean field. Let's also go to our button and if we now click on this button then we want to set this is disabled field to true so that we disable here our button and that this has then a null value. So let's try it out. I click here on this button and you see that our button is now disabled because we have set here this flag to true. Next we want to remove here this size box around our button. 
And then we also want to go to the child property and here you can basically set any widget inside that you like. So in this case, an icon. And if I would remove here right now the border radius, then you see that our icon has here a background color, which you could also disable if you don't like it. And then it looks like this. Let's also add here around our Cupertino button a simple container with a background color of blue. And now you see that this button takes exactly this size. However, in case you don't supply here this padding zero, then our button looks here much differently, like you can see, so it simply takes here more size. Therefore, it is always important to add here this padding to zero in case you don't want that it takes too much space. And of course, you can also replace here this icon then by any other widgets that you like. For example, you put here a row inside and then you can place here an icon and a text next to each other. And for this case, you can simply add here again the padding because maybe it makes sense that your button has then some padding. And let's also remove here the background color so that our button looks again normal. And now we have here this normal button. And by the way, if you like this video, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Music